A Penrose tiling is a non-periodic tiling generated by an aperiodic set of prototiles. Penrose tilings are named after mathematician and physicist Roger Penrose, who investigated these sets in the 1970s. The aperiodicity of the Penrose prototiles implies that a shifted copy of a Penrose tiling will never match the original. A Penrose tiling may be constructed so as to exhibit both reflection symmetry and fivefold rotational symmetry, as in the diagram at the right. A Penrose tiling has many remarkable properties, most notably, it is non-periodic, which means that it lacks any translational symmetry. It is self-similar, so the same patterns occur at larger and larger scales. Thus, the tiling can be obtained through inflation, and any finite patch from the tiling occurs infinitely many times. It is a quasi-crystal. Implemented as a physical structure a Penrose tiling will produce Bragg diffraction and its diffractogram reveals both the five-fold symmetry and the underlying long-range order. Various methods to construct Penrose tilings have been discovered, including matching rules, substitutions or subdivision rules, cut and project schemes and coverings, background and history. Periodic and aperiodic tilings Penrose tilings are simple examples of aperiodic tilings of the plane. A tiling is a covering of the plane by tiles with no overlaps or gaps. The tiles normally have a finite number of shapes, called prototiles, and a set of prototiles is said to admit a tiling or tile the plane if there is a tiling of the plane using only tiles congruent to these prototiles. The most familiar tilings are periodic. A perfect copy of the tiling can be obtained by translating all of the tiles by a fixed distance in a given direction. Such a translation is called a period of the tiling. More informally, this means that a finite region of the tiling repeats itself in periodic intervals. If a tiling has no periods it is said to be non-periodic. A set of prototiles is said to be aperiodic if it tiles the plane but every such tiling is non-periodic. Tilings by aperiodic sets of prototiles are called aperiodic tilings. Earliest aperiodic tilings The subject of aperiodic tilings received new interest in the 1960s when logician Hal Wang noted connections between decision problems and tilings. In particular, he introduced tilings by square plates with colored edges, now known as Wang dominoes or tiles, and posed the domino problem to determine whether a given set of Wang dominoes could tile the plane with matching colors on adjacent domino edges. He observed that if this problem were undecidable, then there would have to exist an aperiodic set of Wang dominoes. At the time, this seemed implausible, so Wang conjectured no such set could exist. Wang's student Robert Berger proved that the domino problem was undecidable in his 1964 thesis, and obtained an aperiodic set of 20,426 Wang dominoes. He also described a reduction to 104 such prototiles. The latter did not appear in his published monograph but in 1968. Donald Nuth detailed a modification of Berger's set requiring only 92 dominoes. The color matching required in a tiling by Wang dominoes can easily be achieved by modifying the edges of the tiles like jigsaw puzzle pieces so that they can fit together only as prescribed by the edge colorings. Raphael Robinson, in a 1971 paper which simplified Berger's techniques and undecidability proof, used this technique to obtain an aperiodic set of just six prototiles. Development of the Penrose tilings The first Penrose tiling is also an aperiodic set of six prototiles, introduced by Roger Penrose in a 1974 paper, but is based on pentagons rather than squares. Any attempts to tile the plane with regular pentagons will necessarily leave gaps, but Johannes Kepler showed, in his 1619 work Harmonices Mundi, that these gaps could be filled using pentagrams, decagons and related shapes. Acknowledging inspiration from Kepler, Penrose was able to find matching rules for these shapes. 
In order to obtain an aperiodic set, his tiling can be viewed as a completion of Kepler's finite A8 pattern, and other traces of these ideas can be found in Albrecht Dürer's work. Penrose subsequently reduced the number of prototiles to two, discovering the chitin dart tiling and the rhombus tiling. The rhombus tiling was independently discovered by Robert Ammon in 1976. Penrose and John H. Conway investigated the properties of Penrose tilings, and discovered that a substitution property explained their hierarchical nature. Their findings were publicized by Martin Gardner in his January 1977 Mathematical Games column in Scientific American. In 1981, De Bruyne explained a method to construct Penrose tilings from five families of parallel lines as well as a cut and project method, in which Penrose tilings are obtained as two dimensional projections from a five dimensional cubic structure. In this approach, the Penrose tiling is viewed as a set of points, its vertices while the tiles are geometrical shapes obtained by connecting vertices with edges, the Penrose tilings. The three types of Penrose tiling P1, P3 are described individually below. They have many common features. In each case, the tiles are constructed from shapes related to the pentagon, but the basic tile shapes need to be supplemented by matching rules in order to tile A periodically. These rules may be described using labeled vertices or edges, or patterns on the tile faces. Alternatively, the edge profile can be modified to obtain an aperiodic set of prototiles. The original pentagonal Penrose tiling Penrose's first tiling uses pentagons and three other shapes, a five-pointed star, a boat, and a diamond. To ensure that all tilings are non-periodic, there are matching rules that specify how tiles may meet each other, and there are three different types of matching rule for the pentagonal tiles. It is common to indicate the three different types of pentagonal tiles using three different colors, as in the figure above right. Kite and dart tiling Penrose's second tiling uses quadrilaterals called the kite and darts, which may be combined to make a rhombus. However, the matching rules prohibit such a combination. Both the kite and dart are composed of two triangles, called Robinson triangles. After 1975 notes by Robinson, the kite is a quadrilateral whose four interior angles are 72, 72, 72, and 144 degrees. The kite may be bisected along its axis of symmetry to form a pair of acute Robinson triangles. The dart is a non-convex quadrilateral whose four interior angles are 36, 72, 36, and 216 degrees. The dart may be bisected along its axis of symmetry to form a pair of obtuse Robinson triangles, which are smaller than the acute triangles. The matching rules can be described in several ways. One approach is to color the vertices and require that adjacent tiles have matching vertices. Another is to use a pattern of circular arcs to constrain the placement of tiles. When two tiles share an edge in a tiling, the patterns must match at these edges. These rules often force the placement of certain tiles. For example, the concave vertex of any dart is necessarily filled by two kites. The corresponding figure is called an ace by Conway. Although it looks like an enlarged kite, it does not tile in the same way. Similarly, the concave vertex formed when two kites meet along a short edge is necessarily filled by two darts. In fact, there are only seven possible ways for the tiles to meet at a vertex. Two of these figures, namely, the star and the sun, have five full dihedral symmetry, while the remainder have a single axis of reflection. All of these vertex figures, apart from the ace and the sun, force the placement of additional tiles. Rhombus tiling The third tiling uses a pair of rhombuses with equal sides but different angles. 
Ordinary rhombus-shaped tiles can be used to tile the plane periodically, so restrictions must be made on how tiles can be assembled. No two tiles may form a parallelogram, as this would allow a periodic tiling, but this constraint is not sufficient to force a periodicity. As figure 1 above shows, there are two kinds of tile, both of which can be decomposed into Robinson triangles. The thin rhomb T has four corners with angles of 36, 144, 36, and 144 degrees. The T rhomb may be bisected along its short diagonal to form a pair of acute Robinson triangles. The thick rhomb T has angles of 72, 108, 72, and 108 degrees. The T-ROMB may be bisected along its long diagonal to form a pair of obtuse Robinson triangles, in contrast to the P2 tiling. These are larger than the acute triangles. The matching rules distinguish sides of the tiles, and entail that tiles may be juxtaposed in certain particular ways but not in others. Two ways to describe these matching rules are shown in the image on the right. In one form, tiles must be assembled such that the curves on the faces match in color and position across an edge. In the other, tiles must be assembled such that the bumps on their edges fit together. There are 54 cyclically ordered combinations of such angles that add up to 360 degrees at a vertex. But the rules of the tiling allow only seven of these combinations to appear. The various combinations of angles and facial curvature allow construction of arbitrarily complex tiles, such as the Penrose chickens. Features and constructions The golden ratio and local pentagonal symmetry Several properties and common features of the Penrose tilings involve the golden ratio phi equals 2. This is the ratio of chord lengths to side lengths in a regular pentagon, and satisfies phi equals 1 plus 1, phi. Consequently, the ratio of the lengths of long sides to short sides in the Robinson triangles is phi, 1. It follows that the ratio of long side lengths to short in both kite and dart tiles is also phi, 1. As of the length ratios of sides to the short diagonal in the thin rhomb T, and of long diagonal to sides in the thick rhomb T, in both the P2 and P3 tilings, the ratio of the area of the larger Robinson triangle triangle to the smaller one is phi 1. Hence so are the ratios of the areas of the kite to the dart, and of the thick rhomb to the thin rhomb. Any Penrose tiling has local pentagonal symmetry, in the sense that there are points in the tiling surrounded by a symmetric configuration of tiles. Such configurations have five-fold rotational symmetry about the center point, as well as five mirror lines of reflection symmetry passing through the point, a dihedral symmetry group. This symmetry will generally preserve only a patch of tiles around the center point, but the patch can be very large. Conway and Penrose proved that whenever the colored curves on the P2 or P3 tilings close in a loop, the region within the loop has pentagonal symmetry, and furthermore, in any tiling, there are at most two such curves of each color that do not close up. There can be at most one center point of global fivefold symmetry. If there were more than one, then rotating each about the other would yield two closer centers of fivefold symmetry, which leads to a mathematical contradiction. There are only two Penrose tilings with global pentagonal symmetry. For the P2 tiling by kites and darts, the center point is either a sun or star vertex. Inflation and deflation Many of the common features of Penrose tilings follow from a hierarchical pentagonal structure given by substitution rules. This is often referred to as inflation and deflation, or composition and decomposition, of tilings or tiles. The substitution rules decompose each tile into smaller tiles of the same shape as those used in the tiling. This shows that the Penrose tiling has a scaling self-similarity, and so can be thought of as a fractal. Penrose originally discovered the P1 tiling in this way, by decomposing a pentagon into six smaller pentagons and five half-diamonds. He then observed that when he repeated this process the gaps between pentagons could all be filled by stars. 
diamonds, boats and other pentagons. By iterating this process indefinitely he obtained one of the two P1 tilings with pentagonal symmetry. Robinson triangle decompositions The substitution method for both P2 and P3 tilings can be described using Robinson triangles of different sizes. The Robinson triangles arising in P2 tilings are called A tiles, while those arising in the P3 tilings are called B tiles. The smaller A tile, denoted as, is an obtuse Robinson triangle, while the larger A tile, AL, is acute, in contrast, a smaller B tile, denoted BS, is an acute Robinson triangle, while the larger B tile, BL, is obtuse. Concretely, if his has side lengths, then AL has side lengths. B tiles can be related to such A tiles in two ways. If BS has the same size as AL then BL is an enlarged version phi as of AS. With side lengths, this decomposes into an AL tile and AS tile joined along a common side of length 1. If instead BL is identified with AS, then BS is a reduced version AL of AL with side lengths, joining a BS tile and a BL tile along a common side of length 1 then yields an AL tile. In these decompositions, there appears to be an ambiguity. Robinson triangles may be decomposed in two ways, which are mirror images of each other in the axis of symmetry of the triangle. In a Penrose tiling, this choice is fixed by the matching rules. Furthermore, the matching rules also determine how the smaller triangles in the tiling compose to give larger ones. It follows that the P2 and P3 tilings are mutually locally derivable. A tiling by one set of tiles can be used to generate a tiling by another. For example, a tiling by kites and darts may be subdivided into A tiles, and these can be composed in a canonical way to form B tiles and hence ROMB. The P2 and P3 tilings are also both mutually locally derivable with the P1 tiling. The decomposition of B tiles into A tiles may be written BS equals AL, BL equals AL pluses, which can be summarized in a substitution matrix equation. Combining this with the decomposition of enlarged phi A tiles into B tiles yields the substitution so that the enlarged tile phi AL decomposes into two AL tiles and one AS tiles. The matching rules force a particular substitution. The two AL tiles in a phi AL tile must form a kite, thus a kite decomposes into two kites and a two half darts, and a dart decomposes into a kite and two half darts. Enlarged phi B tiles decompose into B tiles in a similar way. Composition and decomposition can be iterated, so that for example the number of kites and darts in the NTH iteration of the construction is determined by the NTH power of the substitution matrix, where Fn is the NTH Fibonacci number. The ratio of numbers of kites to darts in any sufficiently large P2 Penrose tiling pattern therefore approximates to the golden ratio phi. A similar result holds for the ratio of the number of thick rhomb to thin rhomb in the P3 Penrose tiling. Deflation for P2 and P3 tilings starting with a collection of tiles from a given tiling. Deflation proceeds with a sequence of steps called generations. In one generation of deflation, each tile is replaced with two or more new tiles that are scaled down versions of tiles used in the original tiling. The substitution rules guarantee that the new tiles will be arranged in accordance with the matching rules. Repeated generations of deflation produce a tiling of the original axiom shape with smaller and smaller tiles. This rule for dividing the tiles is a subdivision rule. Consequences and applications Inflation and deflation yield a method for constructing kite and dart tilings, or rhombus tilings, known as up-down generation. The Penrose tilings, being non-periodic, have no translational symmetry. The pattern cannot be shifted to match itself over the entire plane. However, any bounded region, no matter how large, will be repeated an infinite number of times within the tiling. Therefore, a finite patch cannot differentiate between the uncountably many Penrose tilings.
nor even determine which position within the tiling is being shown. This shows in particular that the number of distinct Penrose tilings is uncountably infinite. Up-down generation yields one method to parameterize the tilings, but other methods use Amundbars, pentagrids, or cut-and-project schemes.